Hello students, in this video we'll introduce the concept of functions of bounded variation. Let f map the closed interval a, b to r be a function, and consider a partition p of a, b, and so recall what a partition p is, p is just a collection of points P is just a collection of points, x0, which is assumed to be A, x1, x2, all the way up to xn, which is assumed to be B, and what? And the, they're lined up like so, x0 less than x1, less than x2, they are ordered properly, less than xn. So in other words, we just chop up the interval A, B into a whole bunch of little pieces like this. And I can always just throw A and B in there, okay? And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, okay, let's define, we say, we say, that f has finite variation on a, b, on a, b, of course, on if what? If the supremum over all partitions of this quantity, the sum, j goes from 1 to n, absolute value fxj minus fxj minus 1, absolute value is less than infinity if the supremum exists. So the supremum over here is taken over all partitions, so this is a supremum over all possible partitions of a, b, right? Of which there's an uncountable number, okay? So we're going to keep, we're going to explore functions of finite variation but let me give you an example of a class of functions which has finite variation. So, example. Monotone functions. And let's just say monotone. I'm just going to do increasing. Decreasing works the same. Have finite variation. How would I prove that? Well, the whole idea is that if the function is monotone, then f of x, j is larger, if we're increasing functions, f of x, j is larger than f of x, j minus 1, so I can limit the absolute values. So the proof of that fact is that for any p, the sum j goes from 1 to n, absolute value f of x, j minus f of x, j minus 1, absolute value is equal to we're assuming now, of course, we're using this assumption that we're increasing is actually equal to the sum j goes from 1 to n of f of xj minus f of xj minus 1. And this sum is going to telescope because all of them are going to cancel. I'm going to have an f of x1, f of x0, f of x2 minus f of x1. So they're all going to cancel out. So, of course, this just looks like what? This just looks like f of xn minus f of xn minus 1 plus f of xn minus 1, minus f of xn, minus 2. The next one is plus of f of xn, minus 2. Da, 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 da. Then we have a f of x2, minus f of x1, and then a plus f of x1, minus f of x0. Right? So all the terms, except for the what? Except for the very last term, except for the very first term, cancel out. So this will collapse to what? f of xn, which is b, minus f of 0, which is a. And that's clearly less than infinity. So independent of the partition, this will always collapse to this expression over here, f of b minus f of a. And so that gives you sort of a clue as to how the variation, uh, and that's sort of interesting because it turns out that this expression over here too, and this gives us sort of a hint for the future, this expression f of b minus f of a happens also to be equal to the integral from a to b of f prime of t dt, right? And since f is increasing, I can sort of drop the absolute value. So I can write this too if I wanted to. So there's some, there's some, we get some rough sense of maybe there's an idea behind the derivative being involved in this idea of, to, uh, this idea of finite variation. Okay. All right. Let's give it another example. Of course, another sort of classic example of these things is that if your function is Lipschitz, then you're also bounded variation. So example is that if f is Lipschitz, f is Lipschitz implies implies that f has finite variation. I'm going to do a similar trick over here. So what am I going to do over here? I'm just going to say, okay, so suppose that f is Lipschitz, which means that for any p, 
this sum over here, the sum j goes from 1 to n of absolute value f of xj minus f of xj minus 1 is less than or equal to what? Since f is Lipschitz, I can bound the difference of f of x and f of y for any x and y by m times x times y. So that's going to be less than or equal to the sum j goes from 1 up to n of m times xj minus xj minus 1. Great. Now, of course, I can drop the absolute value here and turn them into parentheses because xj is bigger than xj minus 1. And again, that sum will telescope to just not, now I just have a b minus a. So this is going to be m of b minus a. And again, the notion of this m being in some sense, if, if this function f was in some differentiable and there was a uniform bound in the derivative, that bound would be m. And so again, we're sort of seeing that the variation is bounded by something that involves the absolute value of the derivative. So that's something to keep in the back of our mind as we begin to understand our study of functions of finite variation. Thank you very much.